Hey guys, Kat here from Standing Stone Kennels. And you may have heard that you shouldn't teach your bird dog to sit. And today I'm going to talk to you about why we actually do teach our bird dogs to sit and how we prevent that from becoming a problem. So I've got this little puppy with me today. His name is Virgil and he's from our breezy dock litter. And he is actually not a puppy we are keeping, but he has stuck around for a couple extra weeks until his family can come pick him up. And we have definitely taught this little puppy through clicker training how to sit. Um, sit is a really good behavior to keep, teach your little puppy. Um, it teaches good manners of not jumping up, um, being collected, sitting, giving focus and attention, and then getting rewarded for that. And it's pretty easy to teach your puppy how to sit. What happens is that sit can become a default for everything that we're asking our puppy. So you ask your puppy to sit, then they get a reward. You ask your puppy to sit before they go outside. You ask your puppy to sit before they get their meal. And you ask your puppy to sit before you throw them a bumper. And soon they're learning that I sit for everything. And that's where it can become a problem. Anything, <laughs> little zoomy boy here, anything that is getting overdone can become a problem. Um, so it's important to teach other behaviors and make sure that your puppy understands the difference between a sit and potentially a woe behavior, which is what we're going to be working on today. And as long as they understand the difference through cue differentiation um, and generalizing those behaviors, then sit isn't going to become the default for everything. And they can learn they can get rewarded for other behaviors too. So to get started with our training session, we've got our clicker, we've got our treats. This little guy's already had the clicker charged and he is a ball of spunkiness here. So we're gonna try and get his attention, get his focus. Um, he, like I said, knows how to sit and he's probably gonna start offering that behavior for us quite um, frequently and almost like a default because that's what he knows at this point and that's what he knows he can get rewarded for. So today, I want to show him that he can actually get rewarded for just standing there. Um, all four feet on the ground, which is the beginning of the woe behavior. Now, I'm not going to tell him woe because at this point, again, he doesn't understand that that word means the behavior of just stopping and standing there. It actually, um, we have to get the behavior to be shaped out of him first. Then once we get him to consistently exhibit that behavior, that's when we can actually start introducing the cue. So let me just get this little guy's attention. Virgil! He's like, I got bored. You were talking a lot. So, pup, 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 puppy. So, he knows I've got some treats. Jumping up, that's okay. And treats, by treats, I mean we've got his uh, evening meal. So, see, we're getting that sit. I'm going to get him to move his feet. No jumping up. Again, that default sit, which we're not going to mark and reward for at this point. So, all four feet, stop moving, wasn't walking, wasn't jumping. No, not for sitting. So I caught him before he sat, but he was in the process of thinking about sitting, so I'll need to watch my timing. Again, he is wanting to sit, but I marked him actually standing, and then he got into the sit behavior. Your clicker, remember, not only marks the behavior, we're looking for, but it ends the behavior too. So once he's heard that click, if he gets into a sit to get his reward, that's fine. Good, good puppy. Good job. So sometimes just getting them to move their feet. So he's sitting again. I just want to get him to move his feet. And then once he's standing again and stops walking, stops moving, I can mark that stand behavior. So he was kind of loading, a little crouching in the back end. There's a good stand. Good job. Good. He's picking up on this really quickly. 
that, hey, I can get rewarded for something other than sitting. There's another sit, but that's okay. At this point, we are just teaching him that literally he can get rewarded for something other than sitting, which is that stand behavior. Then once we've introduced the cue, we can start asking for the behavior, but we're not there yet. Because he's still offering that sit every once in a while. Good boy. And like I said, we're just using his evening meal for his training session today. Good job, Virgil. Good job, buddy. He's got a happy little butt. giving him a few more kibbles, um, little handfuls now. Keep the session moving. So not too long between reps. So that I can start getting that stand behavior exhibited a little bit more. He dropped one. Something that we can start working on is a little bit of duration too, so I'm not having to quite grab that stand behavior the second before he sits, um, but try and get a little bit longer stand out of him. And you gotta read your puppy and make sure you're not asking too much. You know, I don't wanna get greedy and asking him, which I'm not even asking him, but expecting him to stand longer than he can at this point, and then him trying to go, well, that wasn't getting me my reward, so here, I'm going to go into a sit anyway. Good boy. Good little guy. He's doing a really great job exhibiting and offering that behavior. Not 100% consistently yet, because he's still coming up and seeing if a sit's going to get him his reward today. Um, so this is why working on a few sessions of this specific behavior before introducing the cue to make sure he really has a solid understanding of the behavior that I'm looking for is important. Good boy. And as long as we've got this little guy's focus, he's not wandering off, we're able to keep his attention for this session, we can keep it going. But again, reading your puppy and making sure you do have that level of focus is important. Good boy. Good. And I am kind of looking for a little bit of engagement and attention. He's looking up at me, um, which I don't know if you can really see in the video, but I can definitely tell when he's looking down or when he's looking up and giving me that focus, which is important too, to build that engagement and having that level of attention he's giving me. So see, we can, you can see we're still getting quite a few sits out of him. He's not quite got the concept that right now we're only getting rewarded for that standing behavior. So keep moving his feet, getting him to stand up again so that we can mark the behavior of him actually just standing. Good. So I'd like to see a little more consistency out of him with 
that standing behavior being offered before he just reverts into a sit still so that I truly know he has a solid understanding of the behavior I'm looking for. So we just got a couple more handfuls. We're going to keep repping this behavior um, until he gets solid at exhibiting it. Then we'll introduce the cue. And then we can start differentiating between the sit behavior and then the woe behavior once we've introduced that cue. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Kat the dog trainer. This little cutie with a ton of focus is Virgil from our Breezy Dog Litter. And I will see you in the next video. He will be going home to his new forever family. Thanks for watching.